So let's talk about tips uh, how to prevent conflicts in a relationship, how to minimize problems in a relationship. And the first one is about nonverbal communication. Understanding your partner does not always involve verbal communication. In fact, understanding their body language will provide a greater clarity. Uh, pay attention to their facial expression. Uh, if uh, their facial expression correlates with their words, pay attention to their posture. Pay attention to their emotions and to their feelings. And finally, look at your partner when you are talking to them. So tip number two, do not do anything else as they speak. Because if you do anything else, you cannot notice their body language. You can ignore their emotions and their intonation. So do not do anything else while they're speaking. This includes watching TV, answering your text messages, making coffee, or even eating. If you are talking about important things while having dinner, then you can skip lots of information while you are putting yourself extra bread, or while you're pouring yourself a glass of water, or while you're chewing stuff. Put aside everything that you are doing and talk to your partner. Do not multitask. If you, are, if you want to talk to your partner uh, while having dinner, talk about the dinner. Talk about something that's in front of you. So you can be present in the conversation. Do not multitask. Tip number three is stay on the topic of the conversation. And this is also a big, big, big mistake when we're trying to discuss multiple things at once. Uh, this also include another common mistake. So it's going to be mistake number eight, which is when we want to bring up our past conflicts when working out a current situation. Bringing out the past will only make things worse. You should remember this. If you are discussing an important topic, if you're fighting, be in the situation, in the current situation, do not bring the past. If you're going to bring the past into your fight, then it will be harder to find the solution and it will be harder to rebuild the trust. Next tip, admit when you screw up. For some people, it's extremely hard to say that I was wrong. And um, if you will avoid this thing, if you cannot admit when you are wrong, then this will create a big, big gap in your relationship. Do not be afraid to admit that you were wrong. Uh, once you admit that you were wrong, your partner will feel relieved and likely will admit their own mistakes as well. So by admitting things where you were wrong or maybe admitting that you were rude or admitting that you did not listen to your partner uh, will bring the trust into relationship, will bring the vulnerability to your relationship. And this will be a good step to deepen your relationship and to be empathetic towards each other. Next tip, remember the power of us. Very simple. In any situation, in any conflict, or when you have to discuss uh, sensitive topics, keep in mind three components. Yourself, your partner, and your relationship. All three components are important and equal. Remember, equal. All three components are equal. You, your partner, and your relationship. When you need to make an important decision, make sure that your decision will serve all three components, will benefit all three components. It should be beneficial to you, to your partner and your relationship. If one of the components is missing, then look for another solution. Try to find different way how to solve this problem. Next tip is to commit to agreement. If you come to some type of agreement, treat it with respect. 
Do not try to change it, do not try to avoid it, do not try to modify it unless both of you agree that some type of modification is necessary. When you break an agreement, if you break uh, your promise, the other person probably will take it as a betrayal and trust will be lost. And then it will be harder to rebuild it. It will be harder to create a new agreement and it will be harder to believe that this time it will work. Next tip is to support your partner for better and for worse. Some couple make a mistake and forget to celebrate victories of their spouses. They might even feel competitive when their spouse achieved their goal or got promotion at work. And they might devalue the partner's achievement. Other couples can do a completely different thing. Other couples might forget to support each other in difficult situations. When everything is good, they are supportive, they are joyful, they are nice to each other. But when something bad happens, they forget to support each other. When your partner makes a mistake, support them. And I'm not saying that you should support their actions. If they did something bad, I'm not saying that you should support their actions, but rather support their feelings. If your partner made a mistake and is feeling bad about it, be empathetic and tell them that you know how hard it might be for them and that you are here to talk to them or you are here to support them. So do not support their bad actions, but rather support their feelings. Next tip is obvious, but I still want to talk about it. Stay faithful. Unfortunately, lots of couples know about this, but still break this rule. Fidelity is a huge part of any romantic relationship. It involves trust that cannot be repaired once broken. Stay faithful both emotionally and physically. Create traditions and rituals that both of you can enjoy together. Traditions, rituals will help you to keep the spark in the relationship. So it will be easier for you to stay faithful. Um, traditions can be some physical activities like playing tennis on Sundays, going hiking on Mondays, or maybe just walking in the park. Maybe it can be a binge watching your favorite shows together. I know a couple who always go to Hawaii for a week before Christmas. This is their tradition. They always spend the week together in Hawaii no matter what. Uh, another couple is taking dance classes once a week and this creates a new spark in the relationship. So this is extremely important. If you want to keep the spark in your relationship, come up with something that both of you can enjoy together and both of you can share. The next tip is to keep your disagreements private. Do not discuss your problems among friends. I know sometimes it's hard and you want to share something with your sister or with your mom or with your friend, uh, but once you do this, it will make your partner feel humiliated and it will damage your relationship and ruin trust. Do not discuss your disagreements, especially with your family members. Your family members will be always on your side and it will create a picture of your partner as being the bad one. Sooner or later, you will solve your misunderstandings with your partner, but your family members will keep the image in their heads. If you need to talk to somebody, if you need to tell somebody about your feelings, how bad your partner made you feel, find a therapist. Let it be somebody who is not your friend, not your co-worker, or not your family member. A therapist can not only listen to your problems, but can also help you to understand your situation on a deeper level and support you in finding the best solution that will work for you and for your couple specifically. So do not be afraid of sharing your problems with a therapist. 
this will bring more benefits to you than discussing your problems with the family members. And finally, tip number 10 is to work on bettering yourself. Every couple needs to grow as an individual person. Working on yourself will not only benefit you as a person, but will also benefit your relationship. It will solidify your relationship and build trust. On this note, I would like to invite you to my private sessions and to my online group therapy. Also, check out my online courses and my free self-development webinars. I have posted more than 10 webinars already and you can watch all of them for free. All the links will be in the description of this video. And as always, if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I'm looking forward to seeing your questions, to reading your comments. And if you've learned something today, please click like and support my channel. Share this video with your friends and family. It means a lot to me when you're sharing your questions, when you're sharing your videos and when you are giving me likes. Again, my name is Elena Semenek and this is Psychology of Happiness. Please join my free webinars. All the links are in the video description. Until the next time, bye.